Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name's Katie and happy Pride Month. Um, so today we're going to be talking about some of my favourite queer SFF books. So I just thought I would make a list of like some of my top favourites. <laughs> so just to celebrate and kick off the start. And I'm also planning on making like recommendation videos for specific kind of sexualities. So like bisexual recommendations, lesbian recommendations, ace recommendations, non-binary recommendations, I don't know, I just, if you like that idea, the sound of that idea, then definitely let me know, um, because I thought that'd be quite cool, and like finding specific books, so, this one's just a bit of a hodgepodge, <laughs> um, so yeah, and I'm just excited to talk about some of my favourite queer books today, um, so yeah, so I've got my little rainbow dress on, <laughs> um, it's like a, what do you call it, a pinafore dress, <laughs> I just really felt down there. Let's just get started. So the first one I feel like I have to talk about because I love it and I feel like I haven't talked about it in a video for a while is Gideon and Harry the Ninth because I love these so much and honestly I feel like it's time for a reread even though I only reread them in like February. <laughs> um, but I just love them. So basically Gideon we're following um, Gideon Nav who has been brought up in this ninth house and she was kind of brought there as an orphan and she's always been wanting to escape and she's always been thwarted in her escape attempts by like the reverend daughter of the ninth house called Harrow Hark um, and but then one day Harrow kind of recruits Gideon to be her cavalier which is like a bodyguard and they're entering this competition to sort of discover the secrets to this thing called Lictorhood and Lictors are sort of like ascended beings almost like gods um, and they're in competition with other sort of nine houses, because they're like nine houses, um, in this place called Canaan House, which is this kind of creepy gothic manor. Um, yeah, and trying to fight who can see, find who can discover these secrets first. So it's just really good. Harrow and Gideon have the best banter. It's so good. Um, and just Gideon interacting with anyone. Just Gideon's a, an amazing character by herself. She's great. Um, and yeah just oh i just love it and the books they're just so funny and they just have such a great kind of tone to them which i just love and then harry the ninth is also really good and i feel like this one explores sort of older like sort of this kind of pantheon of gods almost although they're not actually gods they're lictors but it, it's just a really interesting dynamic and this book is so, so crazy <laughs> like you won't the first time you read it you won't know what's going on for most of it but just the ending makes everything so worth it and on reread it's an absolute genius book like it, it's so impressive honestly and I'm so excited for Lecto but yeah if you have for some reason haven't read these then you have to um but yeah I really love them so yeah. Then on the theme of sci-fi we have A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace by L.K.D. Martin. Um, I love these ones as well, not quite as much as Gideon <laughs> but I still really enjoy them. Um, so in the first one we're following Mahi who basically is from this um, station called Lisselle Station. Um, the station's always kind of been its own like place but it's sort of been, what's the word, <laughs> in not enraptured like in it's become part of this Texarkana empire um and the kind of Texarkana culture is very like pervasive um so I guess it's sort of like oh it's like a colony of the Texarkana so it's kind of a bit like colonialism yeah, so Mahit travels to the Texarkana like capital and there she sort of gets involved in this like drama <laughs> because her previous ambassador has been like killed um, and, and she also has this like implant in her head that sort of has the memories of the previous ambassador but the one she has is like slightly old so it's happened like before he was killed and um, so it's sort of this mystery and there's also various like political maneuverings going on like there's this almost coup type thing like brewing um, and then Mickey kind of gets end up, ends up involved. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's very interesting. And then the sequel, A Desolation Called Peace, I really love. And this one becomes more sort of in space <laughs> sci-fi. Um, and it's kind of a first contact storyline, which I really loved. Yeah, there's, the main relationship is a sapphic relationship. And it's between Mahi and this other character called Three Seagrass. And I love the development of their relationship in this one. It was just really good. And... So I would definitely highly recommend. Oh, yeah. So 
would recommend these. Okay, then another author that I would highly recommend is Becky Chambers. I have my collection here. <laughs> um, because her books just kind of have a hodgepodge of various different queer characters throughout all of them. Um, and I just love them. They're all so like wholesome sci-fi and they just make you feel really like like a warm hug and just like make you believe in humanity again <laughs> um yeah and there's some really cute relationships like a record of a space bomb for you has this older like married um lesbian couple who i just love them and they go on this little space ride together and oh it's so cute um yeah and i just really love the way she sort of explores relationships and she explores a lot of different kinds of relationships as well like it's not just your typical like two people like in love there's the various different forms of love and like familial bonds and platonic love and it's just very interesting so yeah i just i i love her books <laughs> um i'm sure you can go to any other one of my videos to hear me <laughs> ramble on about her um but yeah i would definitely highly recommend those as well okay then another series that i really love i'm just gonna get out of house of boys because <laughs> it was the easiest one to find but the others are here so rune of kings oh name of all things and memory of souls so i just love this series it's very like a uh, queer friendly like there's a main kind of polyamorous relationship um and there's also another kind of size slightly polyamorous relationship um it's a bit different but it's still really good and there's a, a couple of ace characters as well um yeah and there's just lots of queer side characters as well so it's really good for that and i just love the series it's so chaotic it's so crazy <laughs> like things just keep happening they're kind of ridiculous but you just really love all the characters like you have your <laughs> dumb ones you have your sexy scary ones you have your like fierce badass ones you have the cinnamon rolls yeah you have it all and i just really love the characters and like the world and just the whole like it's just chaotic <laughs> which i really enjoy they are not for everyone i feel like they can be hard to follow at times and just get a bit crazy but i just really enjoy them and um, i like this one. this one especially is kind of a bit cheesy <laughs> um which i quite like they're all a bit over the top to be honest i like the whole sort of especially in memory of souls there's these kind of older immortals that sort of get themselves involved in like the current happenings which i think is really cool and i just really enjoy it. it's very epic and very chaotic <laughs> and yeah so they're just really fun um so yeah i definitely recommend this series okay and then we also have winter's orbit by Avery maxwell so i have them here and my uk and us copy i don't want to get them out because i've been getting books in and out of my shelves all afternoon <laughs> and i can't be bothered anymore um but i'll put a picture in um but yeah i really love this book we're following these two um no okay so one of them <laughs> is prince kiem and he's basically um told he has to marry this guy called jayan who is was previously married to one of kiem's cousins but the cousin mysteriously dies. So it's basically this like arranged marriage and like a political marriage. Um, and it has to happen quickly because in order to kind of appease this treaty for this like galactic force called the resolution. So in order to like prove that the two planets are getting along, they have to show they're like married and cooperating. Um, so that's kind of the basis for the marriage. But then also at the same time, they're trying to investigate what happened to Tam, who's Kian's cousin because um, the circumstances of his death are a bit kind of mysterious and um, also just the kind of character growth especially of Jayan because he's someone who's very sort of uh, timid at the start of the novel and just very sort of people pleasing but he has a lot of sort of trauma and, and you get a very sense very early on as the reader of what's kind of happened but he's very sort of closed off about it and doesn't want to share it. and you just feel so proud of him like throughout the book as he gets more open and just oh and Kiem is just this really cute little soft golden boy prince who just reminds me a lot of Adolin who I love <laughs> so obviously I love him but yeah and it's just a really nice blend of like romance and politics which is just all things I love and set in space as well and also it's a really cool space setting because I really like because as you can probably guess by the title I like the sort of snowy element to it and there's a scene where like they get abandoned in the snow and then they have to like spy and cuddle together for warmth and off <laughs> i'm just a sucker for like cute moments like that um so yeah okay then another series i really love is the rise of kiyoshi series 
So this one we're following Avatar Kiyoshi from the Avatar The Last Airbender series, but we're kind of focusing on Kiyoshi. And in the first one, basically, Kiyoshi doesn't know she's the Avatar. Everyone in the world thinks it's someone else. But suddenly, like, Kiyoshi discovers that she is actually the Avatar. So it's kind of following her story. And she sort of <laughs> ends up at one point with this, like, travelling crew of criminals, which is kind of cool. It reminds me of Miss Spawn in a really weird way. And um, I just especially love Kiyoshi and Ranji, who, there they are. And Ranji is, like, Kiyoshi's bodyguard. Um, I just love the dynamic between them. And, like, Ranji is, like, really spunky, like, fire nation. And Kyoshi's this like tall, slightly awkward <laughs> um, character. Um, yeah, so I just love them and their relationship. And that, that probably makes the series for me. But I, I also really love the world of Avatar The Last Airbender, like the bending. And I just think it's really cool. And like the lion turtles and like the sky bison. And it just made me so nostalgic while reading. Um, so yeah, I just really love this series as well. It, like it has a special place in my heart <laughs> okay then a recent favorite that i loved was a pale light in the black by kb wanga and um, i just love this one this is another like queer found family one and it's just kind of set in space and it's following the crew of this ship and they get a new kind of member called max who's this like lieutenant um and she is kind of joining the ship so she has to kind of try and join like become part of the family which i really love and um we're still following them as they enter into these like games so it's like a intergalactic games type thing um which is really fun and but at the same time there's this conspiracy going on with this substance called life x which can like extend people's lives um but there's like a corrupt version of the drug like coming onto the market so like oh what's going on <laughs> um and the crew of the ship kind of discover this so then they're sort of being hunted about this information um, and Max is also her family. She's sort of the black sheep of the family, but her family is the kind of inventors and like holders of the sort of formula to the life X. So that's quite interesting. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, queer characters as well. So the main character, um, well, no, not the main character. They're all kind of main characters, but it's like, it's more of a cast rather than a specific character. But the um, leader of the ship, captain of the ship, Rosa, she has a wife on Earth with her kids and oh, their relationship is so cute. I love that. Um, and Max is Ace, um, which is interesting. Um, I'm sure, pretty sure Jenks, another one of the characters, is like bisexual. And I'm sure there's a non-binary character as well, like on the ship. And there's just a lot of different kind of genders and sexualities, which is cool. But yeah, it's just like a kind of wholesome, like found family. Oh, I just love it. Um, so yeah, that's that one. I feel like there's been a lot of sci-fi on this list, but there's just truly nothing better than gays in space. I'm just looking around my books and I just saw Rhythm of War and I'm like, no, I can't put that on there because Rabbi O'Neill and Navani aren't a real couple. They always will be in my heart. It, then another series I really love is the Library of the Unwritten series by AJ Hackworth and the sequel, especially Archive of the Forgotten. I love Archives of the Forgotten. I reread it like twice in about two weeks because <laughs> I just loved it so much. Um, but yeah, this one we're following Claire, who's like this librarian, and the library, of, the wing of the library that she like works in is the library in hell. Or the, no, the library is in hell, but the wing she works in is the library of the unwritten, which is basically all books that have not yet been written. Um, and one day this character escaped from one of the books called Hero, and he like tries to run off and hunt down his author. Um, and Claire has to try and um, rescue him, well not rescue him, track him down, <laughs> get him back into the library uh, with the help of her assistant Brevity, who I love Brevity as a character and also um, this kind of weird anxiety demon thing called L Leto. Um, oh no, he's not an anxiety demon, he's like a demon, but he has a lot of anxiety. <laughs> he reminds me, he's like Windle in a human, well, a demon form. Um, and then also at the same time, they're sort of being stalked. <laughs> I don't think stalked is quite the right word. On their kind of trail is this angel called Ramiel. Um, yeah, and then in the second one, it's just, it's so good. It's like this little wholesome family and I love them. And well, found family. And um, yeah, Claire, the main librarian, is Pan. And then in the second book, there's sort of a polyamorous relationship, which is like male, male, female. Um, I'm pretty sure Brevity is. It's just really great. And I just love all the characters. And um, it's another like comforting, slightly crazy 
um, fantasy. So yeah, I would definitely highly recommend. It also reminds me a bit of Good Omens, if you like that. I feel like you really like this. I don't know why it reminds me of that, but it does. So yeah, would highly recommend. I have a lot more that I could probably add to this list. I could just keep going, honestly. But I've been filming for 20 minutes already, so <laughs> I think I'll leave it here. Um, and yeah, definitely let me know in the comments some of your favourite um, queer SFF. And I would really love to know, because I'm always looking to read more. And um, literally, a way to make me read anything is to tell me it's gay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope you're all having a really great day and I will see you next time.